witness what happened? Uh, no, just the doctor, sir. The doctor said the only one here. He's pumping, he's pumping his chest, but he's not responding to anything, sir. Please. Okay, okay. We're on our way. By the time the paramedics arrive, Murray can no longer detect a pulse. Jackson's body is rushed to hospital. But it's too late. At 1426, on the 25th of June 2009, Michael Joseph Jackson was declared dead at the UCLA Medical Center, Los Angeles. The autopsy report concludes that his cause of death was acute propofol intoxication with a contributory factor in the death being benzodiazepines. Once in the bloodstream, both these drugs spread around the body. When they reach the lungs, they have a profound effect. They slow the rate the lungs inflate and deflate, so critically decreasing their ability to oxygenate the body. And you've got to remember that Jackson had really bad lungs. And these things combined have caused the oxygen in his bloodstream to get to such a low level that his heart and his brain have stopped working and he has died. Two months after his death, the autopsy results were announced. The L.A. County coroner has ruled Michael Jackson's death a homicide. The prime suspect was Dr. Conrad Murray. He was tried for involuntary manslaughter. At the trial, the smoking gun was propofol. Conrad Murray states that he gave Jackson 25 milligrams of propofol at 10.40 a.m. Yet the toxicology report shows there was far more than that in Jackson's bloodstream when he died. So the question remains, how are we going to explain this discrepancy? In court, Murray claimed that this anomaly was not of his doing. He suggested it was all down to the other person in the room, Jackson himself. And Dr. Murray left the room. Michael Jackson self-administered a dose, an additional dose of propofol, and it killed him. And it killed him like that, and there was no way to save him. But the prosecution had a different version of events, a version that implicated Murray as guilty. Conrad Murray's actions directly caused the death of Michael Jackson. They claimed Murray had cobbled together a system that kept Jackson continually topped up with propofol whilst he slept. Murray cut into the lid of a bottle of the drug. Once in the saline bag, the propofol could then infuse constantly into Jackson's bloodstream. Normally, saline coming down from the bag mixes with drugs injected at a port and washes them into the body. The prosecution maintained the drug was already mixed with the saline. So, there should be traces of propofol in the tube above the injection port. Despite testing, traces of the drug were never detected. The prosecution claimed there must be a second tube, and Murray had hidden it in the pocket of his combat trousers. But this missing piece of piping was never recovered, casting doubts on the prosecution's version of events. Yet this didn't sway the jury. I am advised that the jury has reached a verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Conrad Robert Murray, guilty of the crime of involuntary manslaughter. Burn in hell. And 
the autopsy supports the court's verdict. Conrad Murray failed in his duty as a doctor. Propofol is a very powerful anaesthetic. There's a very fine line between its proper effects and causing death. In hospital, an anesthesiologist would have the patient attached to numerous machines which would monitor pulse and blood pressure, carbon dioxide levels and oxygen levels. But investigators found no evidence of any medical monitors in the mansion. Murray was sentenced to four years in prison for killing the King of Pop. In a 40-year career, Jackson had established himself as the most successful act of all time. But his success had long been underpinned by reliance on prescription drugs. It was such a tragedy seeing him go from this huge, larger-than-life figure down this road of drug dependency. These drugs had turned him into just a shell of his former self. He didn't have a choice. He was around $400 million in debt. This is it, was, this is it. It was his make or break comeback. He was on a path of destruction. When you walk off into that devil's den, some of us make it out, some of us don't. Jackson's life had been full of turmoil and controversy. In Conrad Murray, he hired a doctor who ultimately failed him. From the moment they met, Michael's fate was sealed. Michael Jackson was a man with numerous physical and psychological problems. And to overcome these, he'd spiraled into drug dependency and addiction. He was using dangerous drugs in an untested manner. In some ways, it's a miracle that he lasted as long as he did.